Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on Yield Measures, Spot Rates and Forward Rates. First, let's talk about the sources of bond return. And this essentially means that if you are a bond investor, what are the different sources of return that you can expect? Let's understand this through a simple example. Let's say that you invest in this bond where the face value is equal to 1000. Let's say it's a five year bond. And let's say that the coupon rate is 10%. And to keep things simple, let's say this is a annual bond, an annual pay bond. Assume that the price that you paid for this bond is 950. So, uh, so this is a discount bond. Now, the coupon interest is the coupon payment that you will get. In this example, you will get 10% of 1000, which is dollars 100 per year. So that's your coupon interest. The capital gain is in this example dollars fifty over five years. Why? Because your initial investment was nine fifty. After five years, you will get thousand. So that fifty dollars represents your capital gain. The income from reinvestment means that every year when you get the coupon payment of hundred, this hundred is reinvested and from the reinvestment obviously you get a return that return is called income from reinvestment now let's talk about different measures of yield and over here we are simply listing the measures over the next few slides we will talk about these in detail the stated coupon rate is obvious so in my earlier example the stated coupon rate was 10% and the remaining we will talk about on subsequent slides but if you can just pause here for a minute and read through these then plant them in your head and we will discuss them over the next few slides so the first one is current yield so current yield is simply annual coupon payment divided by current price so the analogous yield in the stock world would be the dividend yield where we look at the dividend divided by the stock price in the bond world the current yield is the annual coupon payment divided by current price so in the example that i just gave the let's say that over the next year the coupon payment that you are expecting is 100 the price that you paid is 950 so your current yield will be 10.53 percent so 10.53 percent so this is a simple measure next let's talk about the ytm or yield to maturity for an annual pay bond now the the way we look at this is as follows first the interpretation the interpretation is that what is the overall yield you are getting assuming that you will hold this bond till maturity so let's continue with the example that i talked about earlier so let's say we are talking about a five-year bond so zero one two three four five and for the bond that i just uh, considered we said that we make an investment of 950 and then the coupon payments that you are getting every year are 100 100 100 100 and at the end you get the coupon payment plus you get the face value of 1000 so ytm means that given this investment of 950 and then given the cash flow that you will get of 100 100 over 5 years plus the face value of 1000 back what is the overall yield that you are getting assuming you go to maturity and that's why this is called yield to maturity and effectively to find this yield you are taking out the IRR for this cash flow and the simple way of doing this is as follows on your calculator you you can do this a couple of different ways one way to do it is you put in your present value is equal to nine minus 950 the payment 
is equal to 100 the number of periods n is equal to 5 the interest rate is what we are going to compute and the future value is equal to 1000 remember from your quant days that the present value is negative because that's money out and then the payments and the future value are positive because that's money in so let's plug into the calculator and figure out what the interest rate is so when you plug this in and compute the interest rate you should get 11.37 percent so this means that the ytm on this bond is 11.37 37 percent in other words given that you invest 950 and that you are getting this return over the five years your annualized return assuming you hold till maturity is 11.37 percent and this makes sense because clearly what you are dealing with here is a discount bond the amount you paid is less than the par value and hence you will expect that your yield or return or the interest rate that you get is more than the coupon rate so this is greater than the coupon rate of 10 percent now let's take a more realistic scenario where we deal with a semi-annual pay bond most bonds make coupon payments every six months so if we now assume that the bond that we just talked about makes semi-annual payments then the situation will look as follows again let's say that we made an investment of 950 so generally it's a good idea to draw your timeline let's say we have 10 periods now 0 1 2 3 and then this goes on till till 10 you make an investment of 950 the reason i put 10 periods here it is a five year bond and each year is divided into two six month periods so 10 years means 10 six month periods so each period here represents six months our initial investment is 950 if we have a 10 percent coupon rate bond that means that every six months as investors we get five percent so for a six month period the interest rate is five percent which means that every six months we get fifty dollars and in the end we get 50 plus our thousand back now what is the six month interest rate here that five percent is not an interest rate that is actually a uh, the coupon rate after uh, uh, the coupon rate for every six months we need to compute the interest rate exactly the way we did in the previous slide but here we are taking 10 periods because we are dealing with six month or semi-annual periods so our present value is equal to 950 the number of periods now is equal to 10 payments now for every six months equal 50 the future value is equal to 1000 and the interest rate is what we need to compute so let's do this now the interest rate that you should get here is 5.67 but this 5.67 is for a six month period the bond equivalent yield is what we are effectively calculating here and that would simply be 5.67 which is the six month effective yield multiplied by 2 which is 11.34 percent So that is uh, what is often referred to as the bond equivalent yield which is two times the six month yield. Yield to first call. If you recall from earlier lectures there are some bonds that can be called by the issuer and what that simply means is that as an investor you want to figure out that if the bond is called then what is your yield that yield is called the yield to first call 
and to figure this out we sip simply substitute the call price at the first call date for par and the number of periods for the first call date for n let's just do this example first and then i will talk about this second point here but continuing with the bond that we were talking about earlier let's say that the bond is callable after 3 years so the bond is callable after 3 years at 101% of par so and let's assume that it is still a six uh, it's a semi annual pay bond and recall that it was uh, a five year bond but now we will assume that the bond is called after 3 years so 3 years means six periods so 1 2 3 4 5 6 periods and what we are saying is we will assume that the coupon payments are made as before and let's say that again for this bond we paid uh, 950 and the payments being made here are 50 50 50 50 50 and in the end there is this final coupon payment of 50 plus we are saying that there is going to be a uh, the bond will be called at 101% of par par value is 1000 so 101% of 1000 is 1010 now to calculate the yield to first call we simply uh, figure out the effective yield over here and plugging in numbers uh, again what we are going to say is uh, present value is equal to minus 950 n is equal to 6 periods payment is equal to 50 the future value instead of taking the par value we take the call value which is 1010 and the interest rate is what we compute the interest rate that we get here is 6.16 again remember this is for a 6 month period so to annualize this we multiply by 2 and we get 12.33 so this is our yield to first call yield to worst is the lowest of all the etm uh, ytms and yield to calls in the sense that if you have a first call as described here then let's say you have a second call after 4 years which is at 100% of par and then you have your then you have a ytm which assumes you hold till maturity the point is that you use this procedure to calculate your ytm and use this procedure to calculate all the yield to first call yield to second call etc and then yield to worst is simply the lowest yield yield to put and cash flow yield are similar so yield to put we simply substitute the put price so let's say the put price is 99% of par so instead of putting in par value we will put the we will we will use the put price and the number of periods to the put date so if the put can be done after 6 periods then n becomes equal to 6 so the calculation is exactly what you just saw but if it is based on the a put option then it's called yield to put cash flow yield is simply the monthly irr based on the expected cash flows so you simply look at your investment then this is normally used for a uh, amortizing uh, security such as a mortgage based security and so on so you look at your investment you look at all the cash flows that you will get plug in the cash flow 1 cash flow 2 and so on and then figure out what is the monthly interest rate that you are getting so effectively you get your monthly irr and that's called the cash flow yield if you want you can then annualize the monthly irr and then it will be a annualized number so the the yields that we have generally talked about so far are based on the internal rate of return method 
and there are several assumptions that have gone into calculating these yields we need to understand those assumptions assumption uh, one of the main assumptions is that we assume that the bond will be held to maturity and maturity might be defined as if if you have a if a bond is not called and it's a 5 year bond then the maturity will be 5 years but if the bond is callable then we calculated a yield to first call or yield to second call which was assuming that the bond will be held till the call date now that's not necessarily the case because as an investor after 2 years you might simply sell the bond in the secondary market so in that case the the yield might and might be different from either the yield to maturity or the yield to first call so the simple point is that in the calculation we assume that the bond is held to maturity whereas in reality it might not be second assumes no default so a basic point is that when you buy a bond if the bond is giving you a high yield so especially if you have a discount bond then there is a relatively high chance of default so higher risk bonds will give you a higher return but the risk of default is is also high and in our calculations we just ignored the risk of default number 3 we assume that cash flows can be reinvested at the computed rate the idea being this let's say that you calculate ytm equal to 11% this calculation assumes that any any coupon payment like if you are getting a coupon payment of 50 50 every period the assumption is that this 50 can be reinvested at the ytm rate of 11% now that might not be the case the situation might be that by the time you come to the first period the the interest rates might now be down to 10% which means that subsequent cash flows are being invested at a lower rate if you if you invest these coupon payments at a lower rate then your actual yield is going to be less than the ytm that you calculated in the beginning so that's obvious why because if the ytm or the interest rate remains 50% 11% that means all your cash flows are being invested at 11% and then everything is fine but if rates fall then your reinvestment is happening at a lower rate so that means overall your actual return is going to be less than the ytm and similarly if the interest rates rise then your actual returns are going to be greater than ytm and finally we assume flat yield curve or a flat structure of uh, a flat term structure which means that if you recall from your yield curve discussion that this is maturity and these are the different yield curves we assume that uh, all our coupon payments are being or all our cash flow is being discounted at the same rate so these measures that we've talked about so far assume essentially a flat yield curve